Last week, me and my friend Alf went to do zip wiring. It was really fun, but I couldn't stop myself from thinking, what will happen if somebody falls from this height? Probably he'll break a bone. Starting the uh, wide zip line, it's kind of a little bit high and a lot of wobbly bridges. So Alf, do you want to say something before we finish? Bye, Bye cruel worry. <laughs> Watch the video till the end to have a plan to deal with the situation if someone have a suspect of a bone fracture. Welcome to Dr. Hosni's channel. This is Dr. Hosni. Here we will deal with different health topics and medical emergencies and how to face it in the proper way to stay safe and save lives. Please support us by subscribing in our own channel and hitting the notification bell so that you will never miss any of our upcoming episodes. Most of us have broken bones at least twice in our lifetime. And this happens when the force exerted on the bone is stronger than the bone itself. Broken bones are very common in childhood, yet it's less complicated than fracture of the bones in the adults. There are many types of fracture of bones, but the main categories are either displaced or non-displaced, closed or open. Displaced and non-displaced refer to the alignment of the fractured bone. In displaced fracture, the bone snaps into two or more parts and moves so that the two ends are not aligned together. And if the bone is fractured into many pieces, we call it comminuted fracture. In non-displaced fracture, the bone cracks but still maintains its alignment in the proper way. Close fracture happens when there is break in the bone, but there is no wound or opening through the skin. While in open wound, the bone penetrates through the skin. Sometimes it recedes back into the wound and not being visible into the skin. We need to differentiate between open and closed wound, as in open wound, there is high risk of getting deep infection inside the bone. There are other subtypes of fracture of bone, such as green stick fracture, which happen in children, in which the bone bend, but is not broken all through the bone. Comminuted fracture, in which bone is broken into several pieces. And pathological fracture, in which there is bone disease that make it friable and easy to be broken. Serious fractures can have dangerous complications if it's not treated properly. And from this complication is injury to a blood vessel or a nerve. Infection of the bone itself, which we call it osteomyelitis. The healing time of a fracture is varied according to the patient's age and general health and the type of the fracture itself. For example, a fracture in a child can take few weeks to be healed, while a fracture in an adult can take months if it's a severe one. By the fact that bone fractures are not life-threatening conditions, yet it needs immediate medical care. So, it's very important to know well the symptoms and signs of fractured bone so that you can give the proper first aid until the professional help comes. And from the symptoms and signs of a broken bone is Number one, intense pain at the injured area, which is worsened while moving it. Number two, numbness at the injured area. Number three, bluish discoloration and swelling. And sometimes you can see the deformity itself. Number four, in open fracture, the bone can be seen protruding through the skin. Number five, if a vessel is injured, heavy bleeding can occur. So, what's the first aid steps that we should do if we are suspecting someone got a broken bone? Number one, stop bleeding. If they are bleeding, elevate the limb and apply pressure using a clean piece of cloth or even a clean clothes like a clean t-shirt. Number two, immobilize the injured area. If there is suspicion there is a broken bone in the neck or in the back, please help the patient to stay still and not to move till the professional help comes. Please don't try to realign the bone or push the protruded bones into the skin back into its place. As by this maneuver, you can injure an artery or a vein and cause more injury like more bleeding or paralysis of the limb. If you are suspecting a broken bone in one of the limbs, immobilize the limb by using sling 
or splint. By applying it above and below the fracture site. We will discuss in details how to do the splint in the following episodes. Number three, apply cold to the injured area. You can wrap a bag full of ice cubes in a piece of cloth and apply it into the injury. You can do that for 10 minutes at a time. Number four, treat the patient from shock. And you can do that by reassuring the patient and try to elevate the lower limb if possible, a little bit more than the level of the heart. Encourage him to rest and cover the patient with a blanket or clothes. Number five, call the emergency hotline for professional care. And if the patient is unconsciousness or doesn't breathe, start to do CPR at once and let somebody call the emergency hotline. And you should call the emergency hotline in the following conditions. Number one, if you suspect a broken bone in the head, neck, or the back. Number two, if the fracture push through the skin. Number three, if the patient is bleeding heavily. Otherwise, help the patient to go into the emergency room to get the proper treatment and care. Bone fracture can happen if you are playing sports or doing activities like biking. So, it's better to wear the protective gears that is suitable for every activity. And it's very important to subscribe in our own channel and hit the notification bell so that you will never miss any of our upcoming episodes. And if you like the video, please support us by giving thumb up like to this video. Thank you so much and see you next time.